Hello and welcome to the Intramural Softball Captain's Video. My name is Mike White, Director of Intramural Sports. And I'm Tommy Shore, Assistant Director of Intramural Sports here at the University of Iowa. And today we're going to go through the Intramural Softball Captain's Video to give you all the information you need as a team captain to get your team ready to play for this 2012 Intramural Softball season. We first want to introduce you to our staff. These are our two graduate assistants that help with the administration of our program, Eric Cohen and Andy Christopher. And then we have undergraduate student supervisors, and these are the folks that you'll see out at the fields when you're playing softball. If you have any questions about the event or your team, uh, you can come up and ask any one of these supervisors. To start off with, we'll talk about intramuralleagues.com, which you've all been to by this point. Uh, and you can see some team announcements that we will post on there. You'll be able to add players to your roster. Uh, the team schedules will be posted, along with sport rules information sheets, those will be available on the site, as well as the updated standings and brackets. So after your games are over, throughout the season, you can go in and check how your team's doing in relation to everyone else. Some responsibilities that you have as a team captain. Uh, number one is you need to make sure your teammates are eligible. You can do that by verifying that they're listed as eligible on your roster at imleaks.com. You also need to make sure the information that we talk about today and is listed in the sport rules is passed along to your teammates. So make sure you're disseminating that information to your teammates. And then you're going to serve as the team captain, uh, as the official contact with our office. So if we have any issues with your team or need to get a hold of you for some reason, uh, you're going to be that team contact that, that we'll get a hold of. As far as your roster goes, you can have players added to your roster throughout the season um, as long as they're added by 8 a.m. the morning of your quarterfinal game. So throughout the whole regular season and in the playoffs up through that quarterfinal round, once we've reached the quarterfinals, then those rosters will freeze for the remainder of the tournament. In order to be eligible to play for your team that night, you have to be added to your team's roster by 8 a.m. the morning of the game if you're playing during the week. If you happen to be playing on the weekend, on Saturdays and Sundays, then that deadline to get it added to the roster will be Friday at 5 p.m. You need to check imleagues.com frequently in order for you to make sure that everybody is listed as eligible. You want to do that regularly so that way you don't get to the game site and realize that some of your players aren't listed as eligible. If you have anyone that's on your roster that needs to be dropped, for whatever reason it might be, you need to fill out a paper form called a drop request form. And those are available in our office in E216 Fieldhouse as well as on imleagues.com. Then once that form is completed, you can drop that off to our office. There's a drop box just outside of our office school. As far as who's eligible to play intramural sports, it is restricted to University of Iowa students, faculty, and staff members, or legally married uh, partners or spouses uh, to those students, faculty, or staff members. And when you are, uh, as an individual player, when you're playing, you need to represent only one team in the men's or women's division, and only one team in the co-rec division. If you happen to have a player on your team that's played for two men's or women's teams or two co-rec teams, then that player is then ineligible to participate for the rest of the season because they have participated on two teams, uh, two men's and women's teams or two co-rec teams. And any team that plays with ineligible players will forfeit that game. So if we find that one of your players has played on multiple men's teams or multiple co-rec teams, then they play for you, your team's going to forfeit those games. So make sure your players are only playing for your men's or women's team and only playing for your co-rec team. A couple examples here as uh, illegal um, player eligibility. Someone could not play on a men's open team at Mondays at 6 and then play in another league on Tuesdays at 8. That is illegal. Uh, a couple of these in green are legal options, playing on a men's open team and a co-rec team or playing on a women's open team and a co-rec team as well. As far as intercollegiate athletes go, if you're an intercollegiate athlete in the sport of softball or baseball, you're not eligible to participate in intramural softball. Uh, if you have a former Division I softball or baseball player on your team's roster, that person needs to have sat out two full semesters before becoming eligible to play in intramural sports. When you get to the site, the Hawkeye Softball Complex, you're going to present a university ID card. Each player will present that to our staff and they will check in. There's an example of what one looks like here. And every player is going to do that with the official or the supervisor to check in on site 
uh, with their university ID card. They need to have that in order to play. No ID equals no play, and there's no exception. So as a team captain, please remind all your players every time they leave for a game to come play at the softball complex, they need to be bringing their university ID card. If we do have someone that participates in a game by misusing an ID card, falsifying their identity, uh, that is a suspension from intramural sports for one calendar year. So make sure your participants are using their own ID cards and no one else is illegally playing by falsifying their ID. And we are required by the UI Student Code of Conduct to forward these incidents along to the Dean of Students office. So uh, in order to stay out of trouble, just make sure your players are playing and saying who they are supposed to be. As far as participant conduct goes, anyone that participates in a fight uh, will be suspended from recreational services activities for a calendar year. And fighting incidents, just like misuse of IDs, are required to get forwarded to the Dean of Students office. So talk to your players about sportsmanship and about fighting, and we'll have no problems with this for this season. Uh, ejections, if we do get to the point where we have to eject a player, there's a few things that need to happen, and some of those involve you as a team captain. Uh, number one, that ejected player, along with you as a team captain, will be required to meet with our staff and talk about the ejection and how we can get better going forward. And you, as a team captain and the ejected player, will not be eligible to play again until that meeting has taken place. So we will be contacting you as a team captain and an ejected participant uh, in order to set up that meeting if that ever happens. And then the person that is ejected will be suspended for a minimum of one game based upon the severity of the ejection. The sportsmanship of your team will be rated by our umpires that are on the field for your game on a scale of one to four, one being excellent and four being poor. Teams that are receiving a three or a four rating will be contacted by our office, and if you receive the worst rating of four, then you will be required as a team captain to meet with our staff to talk about the sportsmanship of your team. And also as important in this area is you need to maintain a specific sportsmanship average within a range of 1 to 2.5 in order to maintain an eligibility to get into the playoffs and to continue on throughout the playoffs. So make sure you're, you're trying to do the best you can for your team and as far as sportsmanship goes. Our softball games are umpired by our intramural student officials. Uh, some of them may be certified in ASA or National Federation of High School Associations with a softball certification, but most of them will probably not be. So they do go through a training course that we provide them uh, with rules, mechanics, and positionings that we train them with. If you have any questions or uh, incidents that go on regarding umpires, you need to bring those to the attention of our supervisors. Forfeits. If a team does not have the minimum number required to start a game at the site within 10 minutes of your game time, that game will go down as a forfeit. If your team forfeits, you do pay a fine as a team captain of $32.50, which is half your entry fee. That gets charged to your university U bill uh, because you're the team captain. However, if you continue the rest of the season and do not forfeit a second time, then you will receive that forfeit fine refunded back on your university ID. One way to avoid forfeits is to default. Defaulting is a way that you can let our office know that your team is not going to show up for their game for whatever reason. And to, in order for it to be a default, that has to be declared by noon on the day of your game. And you have two methods in order to do that. You can email Eric Cohen, our graduate assistant, or you can call our office at 319-335-9292. And by doing so, defaulting a game means you as a team captain will not be charged the forfeit fine for your team not showing up. Protests are a way for you as a team captain to get involved if there's a misinterpretation or misapplication of a rule. If that's the case, you can stop the game at the time of the incident, bring it to the attention of our supervisors, and they can uh, make a ruling on that. If there's another, if there's a ruling that you don't agree with by the supervisor, you can always bring that to our office uh, and fill out an official protest form of five dollars the next business day, and then we'll go back and replay the game if you happen to be right and our staff were incorrect. Our team schedules for softball will be posted on Thursday, March 22nd, and those will be available on the imleagues.com website, so you can log on to the sport page 
and get the team schedules there. And then the games will begin at the Hawkeye Softball Complex, weather permitting, on Monday, March 26th. The standings for the regular season and for the playoff schedules will be posted on the intramural bulletin boards outside of E216 Fieldhouse, as well as on imleagues.com. And the top two teams in each section of four are going to qualify for the playoffs in each of the men's, women's, and co-rec divisions. So now Tommy Shore, Assistant Director, will take you through the rest of the video. All right, once you're registered and have your schedule and everything, uh, the games will be played at the Hawkeye Softball Complex uh, on the Iowa City Coralville border over there by Old Chicago and Walgreens. If you're unfamiliar, it's really easy to find if you're driving down the strip into Coralville. Uh, it's right there. Alcohol and tobacco are not permitted inside the complex or in the parking lot. This is a university policy, and we will have university police monitoring that parking lot in the facility to make sure there's no alcohol being consumed or tobacco being used in or around our facilities. The game will consist of seven innings, six and a half if the home team is ahead, or 50 minutes. No new inning will begin after 50 minutes uh, to keep ourselves on schedule and to keep games moving. Uh, that is our time limit. The only exception to this is if a game is tied at the end of 50 minutes, we will continue until a, uh, an inning has been completed with one team ahead. So if any, if any new innings start after 50 minutes, it will only be, be because it's a tie game. The game will become official after five innings, four and a half if the home team is ahead. So if there's inclement weather or rain coming or something like that, if you've played five full innings or four and a half if the home team is ahead, that constitutes an official game. In, in the case of rain or inclement weather, for some reason it needs to be stopped. There are mercy rules in effect, 15 run rule after four innings, so if one of the teams is ahead by 15 or more runs at the end of four innings, or if a team is ahead by 10 or more runs at the end of five innings, the game will be stopped and the team that is ahead will win via mercy rule. Equipment. We want to make sure you guys have no metal spikes or cleats. Uh, if you do, this will result in an injection. So we just want to make sure we're proactive about this and making sure that none of your team players are wearing these out to the facility because they're not permitted. We don't want players to get ejected, so make sure you pass this along uh, to the, the participants on your team that they cannot be wearing metal spikes out of the facility. 12-inch softballs will be used for all games, men's, women's, and co-rec, and players must apply their own gloves and bats. We may have a limited supply at the facility, based on our lost and found intake, uh, but the safe bet is to make sure every player on your team has their own glove or bat to use. All bats must be ASA approved. We will have an illegal bat list at the facility in case there is a situation in which uh, there may be a, an illegal bat being used. Team composition. You need eight players to start a game, and you have to have a minimum of eight players on your roster to complete registration. Uh, so make sure you have eight players at the facility checked in, ready to go to start the game. You can bat a maximum of 12 players in your batting lineup. Uh, so you can have as many players on your team as you want, but only 12 can bat, and you can only play 10 in the field at one time. Some ground rules, uh, sport rules for intramural softball here at the University of Iowa. You're going to start with a one and one count, so one ball, one strike when you step up to bat. A foul ball on the third strike results in a strikeout, so you just can't keep hitting foul balls until you get a pitch you like or something like that. A uh, foul ball on a third strike will record a strikeout. Legal pitch, so when you're pitching, there must be a minimum arc on the pitch of 6 feet and a maximum arc of 12 feet. So when the pitch is coming from the pitcher to the batter, it's got to be higher than 6 feet and lower than 12 feet, excuse me, lower than 12 feet at its peak. A three over the fence home run limit per game. So if your team is playing, you hit three home runs. If you hit another home run, that will be recorded as an out. So you can only hit three home runs over the fence. The only exception to this is if the other team also has three home runs, then you can go one and one. So basically you can't ever be more than one home run over the fence home run ahead of the other team once you get to that three over the fence home run limit. And the infield fly rule will be applied when it's in effect during the course of the game. 
For substitution purposes, all subs must bat and play at least three, three defensive outs before that person can come out of the game. So once you have a substitute, that person's uh, got to take an at-bat at the plate and play at least a half inning in the field and with three defensive outs in order for them to be able to be taken back out of the game. Pinch runners may be used for injured players. So if you have someone on your team uh, that has a hurt knee or something like that and they're injured and don't run the bases too well, if they get on base by getting a hit or a walk or, or however they get on base, you can substitute a player as a pinch runner for that per injured player that got on base. Now some restrictions to this must be of the same gender. So if you're playing in co-rec and a female participant gets on base and she's injured and you want a pinch runner, a female uh, team member must replace that person. It must be the person that recorded the last out of the same gender in co-rec or a person of the same gender on your roster signed in that has not yet entered the game. Some co-rec adaptations, maximum of five males and five females in the field at one time. Uh, so that equals your, your 10 maximum, five males, five females. And there's a minimum of four males and four females at any time, which equals the, the eight minimum that you're required uh, to have signed in to, to start playing the game. Pitcher and catcher combination, you must have one male and one female in your pitcher-catcher combination. It doesn't matter which one's the pitcher, which one's the catcher but they must be different genders. The batting order must alternate genders in co-rec intramural softball. If two consecutive males or two consecutive females bat simultaneously, an out is recorded. So if you have the fourth spot in your lineup and the sixth spot in your lineup are both females, then you're going to have to record an out in place of that fifth spot. Males receive, that receive three straight balls and no strikes during their at-bat will be awarded second base. So if you're a male in a co-rec game and you get pitched three straight balls, you can go ahead and go right on to second base. And any runners that get bumped along because of that, and uh, excuse me, get to advance as well. Buffalo Wild Wings Intramural Sports Points Championship. Throughout the year, we run this, this program with sponsorship from Buffalo Wild Wings. Points are awarded to each team that participates in each sport. So whether you know it or not, throughout the year, you could have been accumulating uh, points for your teams. Points are based on each team's finishing position. So the better you do make the playoffs, advance in the tournament bracket, the more points you will get at the end of the season towards the Buffalo Wild Wings in World Sports Points Championship. And to accumulate points from different sports throughout the year, your team or organization must keep the same team name. At the end of the year, champions will be awarded in the men's, women's, fraternity, sorority, and co-rec divisions. So there's five different divisions. Each, cha each championship team will receive a championship trophy and a $100 gift card to Buffalo Wild Wings. Also a partnership we have with some other folks across campus is the online confidential alcohol assessment. What this is, is a way for, for us to get some people to complete that alcohol assessment uh, confidentially and the way it works with intramural sports is if you have 75% of your team's final roster, so at the end of championship night, however many players you have on your roster, if 75% of those players have completed this e chug confidential alcohol assessment, your team will receive a refund of its registration fee. Details about this process are available on the intramural sports website through recreational services and also on imleagues.com. We will hold a waitlist meeting for intramural softball for, for teams that aren't able to choose divisions they want or get in right away uh, to certain divisions. That meeting will be held Wednesday, March 21st at 3 o'clock p.m. in room 201 of the Fieldhouse. Again, like I said, this will allow waitlist teams, teams to choose their divisions and we'll accommodate as many teams as we can given facility space and time. Officials training. If you're interested in being in intramural softball umpire. You can come to our intramural softball umpires training which begins on Tuesday March 20th at 6 o'clock p.m. This training will be located and will start out in the Hawkeye softball complex press box. Uh, so go to the Hawkeye softball complex. We'll have the gates unlocked. You can come in and we'll have people directing you how to get up to the press box where we'll go over some rules of the intramural softball season and then we'll go out on some fields and do some positioning and mechanics 
uh, for our intramural officials. So if you're interested in becoming an intramural umpire, go ahead and attend this meeting. Now that this video is coming to a close, we want to make sure you are familiar with the registration requirements for intramural softball. Every team that registers, before you can even start the process to name your team and all that stuff, you must complete the captain's quiz. In order to do this, you have to answer 20 questions, get 17 questions correct. You can take it as many times as you need to, and also available to help you answer these questions and work through the quiz. You can use the sport-specific rules document, which in this case is intramural softball rules. You can use the IM rules and regulations for our program, and you can also use this video to help you answer any and all questions on that quiz. All of this stuff is available on imleagues.com. Once you pass the captain's quiz, you can name your team, agree to the waiver, all that fun stuff that you get to do, and then to complete the rest of your registration, you must meet the minimum player requirement, which for intramural softball is eight players on your roster. Uh, for co-rec, four males and four females is the minimum that you need. Maximum, you can go as many as you want, as long as they aren't already on another team. Once you've met the minimum number of player requirement, you must pay the registration fee. You can do that on imleagues.com via PayPal. And once you meet the minimum player requirement, there will be a big link that says pay now. You can click on that and get that taken care of. Then you select your day and time that you want to play. So you're selecting your division. Then all your regular season games will be at that time. The playoffs will be a little different, but we'll get you your regular season games during those times. And all this must be done by 8 o'clock a.m. on Wednesday, March 21st, in order for you to be included in the intramural softball season. So if we get to that point, make sure you'll get an email reminder, but make sure you've got all, that, all those steps completed for registration uh, to make sure you're part of the season. With that, that's the end of the video. Good luck this season. We hope you have a great season. And as always, if you have any questions about intramural softball or anything related to intramural sports, you can contact us at 319-335-9292 or stop by the intramural sports office in E216 Fieldhouse.